Hi, Abraham. I want to talk a little bit about co-creation, and I want to use a quick example. Because um, everything is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And it gets a little complicated when there's so many people creating. Uh, but who do you other. think is your primary co-creative partner? Me. And? My source. Me and me. Yeah. Me and me. Sure. So as long as you've got that cooperation going on, then everything else will be clearer at any yeah. rate. Yeah. So uh, one time I was watching a basketball game at home and it was a big, like, you know, playoff or something. And the home team had like seconds to get their final shot and the guy threw and it missed. And I knew that in the vortex it went in. But I also knew that there were thousands of people watching it on this game that were influencing possibly how it went. I'm curious, like in a situation like that, like did I still create that reality or was it the person that threw the ball or was it everybody watching in? I'm just kind of curious how it works on big scales like that. There is involvement from everyone who has any interest in it. There is involvement and some form of influence. Of course, anyone who's really tuned in, tapped in, turned on, who has sincere interest in something has stronger influence. Esther feels fairly certain that she can help. And she discovered pretty early on in her wanting to help that hindering the other team isn't the kind of help. <laughs> so yes, everything is part of it. Yes. Okay. So it, it just, it, it emphasizes that being aligned is key because it's our well, own influence. Nothing is better than the person with his hand on the ball being in alignment because when he's in alignment, he has not only the resources of strength and agility and hand-eye coordination and all of that that he's been practicing, but he's in the moment. He has this broader perspective of understanding the laws of physics to perfection. And so once he's allowed himself through his training, hear these words because we're offering them very deliberately. Through his training, he has allowed himself to believe. The training isn't what makes it possible for him to make that basket. The training is what makes him believe in the connection to that broader understanding that helps him make that basket. You see what we are getting at? We want to explain that to you in this way because this applies more specifically to what most of you are doing. Through the years, we've offered many processes processes to help you think thoughts that feel better, understand the value of feeling better, getting to a place of feeling better. In other words, every process is about helping you feel better. And yet recently we've been saying to you that the thing that we really would prefer that you all do is just meditate so that you get your contrasting thoughts out of the way so that you allow your full connection to your broader perspective so that you let in the in this moment path of least resistance response from the universe moving you closer and closer toward what you want and so it sounds a little bit like we are now replacing all processes with simply the process of meditation and really we sort of kind of are in that sense however all of those processes have been helpful in helping you to believe more in your ability to create. All of it has been preparing you for the profound leverage of connection. Anybody who's tuned in, who in some moment is tuned in, could throw a ball at a basket and hit it if they were really tuned in. Because the broader perspective of them knows what it's going to take to get this body in whatever state it's in to be able to do that. And someone absolutely aligned would be able to do that. But the trick is remaining in alignment. And so the more that people develop their bodies and the more that people practice, then the more they come to expect or perceive themselves as capable of doing that. Then they get into what you often describe as that chaotic mixture of so many thoughts. And we say that chaotic mixture of so many distractions, so many things that distract you from your true and sincere purpose in any moment in time. So 
What we're really talking about with all of these too many words that we're finding is focus. We're really talking about focus, focus in any moment. And the first focus that we're looking for is the first question that we put to you, focus into alignment with source and then, and then. The analogy that we've been offering recently that amuses Esther so much that she wants us to use it. It's like vacuuming your floor and not plugging the vacuum cleaner into the electrical outlet. I love that one. So you're really not vacuuming, but you are going through the motions. And if anyone's looking with a camera that has no sound, they would think you were doing a really good job because you're covering every part of the floor. But unless it's plugged in, you're really not getting the job done. And so many people go through so many motions without taking the time to do the most essential thing, which is plug in first. Yeah. So uh, back to the basketball example, when, like I know that in the vortex it went in and that, and it, it, like I thought about this, it's been years, that like, what, what is the value of the fact that it went in, not in this reality, but it did go in in the vortex. And I'm just like, I feel like there was still the missed opportunity, but I'm, I'm sure there's value that it happened in the vortex. I'm curious. We would say it a little differently rather than saying it went in when all the eyes said it didn't, we would say in the vortex, there was an expectation of success in the vortex. Success was achieved in the vortex. Good things came from it in the vortex. Nothing went wrong because in the vortex, it's a game where someone's going to win and someone's going to lose. And all of that is good in the vortex. Okay, so it actually did not go in, in the vortex then. <laughs> what I'm hearing. <laughs> it didn't go in anywhere. Okay. <laughs> it didn't go in. It didn't okay. go in. Let's not twist everyone's brain okay. into a knot. It didn't go in, but in the vortex, it wasn't wrong that it didn't go in. In the vortex, it was all right that it didn't go in because in the vortex, it was a win anyway. But it is fun to exercise your influence. It's very much fun to exercise your influence. This is what we've been talking about in all the hours that we've been together so far is that your inner being knows who you are and knows what you want and knows your value. But think about the inner beings of the players on the opposing teams. Everyone would say, well, doesn't my inner being want me to win, but your inner beings look at winning in a lot of different ways. And we're really not saying that losing is winning because everyone wants more balls in the basket under these conditions. What we're saying is your inner being understands the whole of who you are in your vortex. There are so many intentions and all of them are cooperating with one another. And so, if you can accept that the cooperative components are all there and then you do your best to be one of the cooperative components, then you find yourself living happily ever after, which is the big win feeling satisfaction, no matter what, which is the big win, not using something as your excuse to not be in alignment with who you are, which is the big win. Esther has noticed that if she can achieve under those conditions, what she is describing as a soft and gentle focus. If she's got too many dogs in the fight, so to speak, if it matters too much to her, she realizes that her involvement in the scenario doesn't help, but it hinders. Isn't that interesting? But a soft and gentle focus means an expectation of an outcome that is pleasing to me and not so much a play by play description of what's going on. Esther's had experiences with friends, several friends where they'll be in a restaurant or maybe in a bar at an airport or something during a longer layover. And there is a game on the television, not too long ago, a football game. And Esther was not invested. She didn't even know who was playing. She had to read to see who was playing. And she had to ask to see what colors were what. And she sat there with a friend and she said, want to have some fun? Let's root for the underdog. Who's losing big gap in the score. So they just focused softly and started sort of receiving almost in advance understanding about what the next play was going to be. What do you think that was tuning in to source energy and having access to intentions? So beaming like a satellite dish, those thoughts that Esther was receiving and her friend was receiving too, they began calling the plays and it was so much fun because everything they called 
began to happen. And the gap closed and closed and closed and closed. And they were feeling pretty frisky by the end of the game. <laughs> and then this wonderful play at the end of the game where something that could not possibly have happened happened. An unbelievable, not just play of the game, but play of the year sort of thing happened. And everyone's talking about it. And all of the talking heads are talking about it. And they interview the player and he says, I honestly can't tell you what happened. Something came over me and I knew what to do. And Esther and her friend said, that was us. That's what I was thinking. Were you receiving the information or were you creating the, the experience? Well, that's so, the best yeah. question of all, because am I creating my own reality or am I anticipating? Am I getting precognitive advanced announcements of what's going on? And in many ways, since it's in the vortex and since it's vibrational, you're doing some of both. You give us the opportunity. Thank you so much of saying the most important thing that we'll ever say to anyone. And that is you do it all in advance of the reality happening. You do your creating in those ethers, in those thoughts, in that vibrational place before the action takes place. That's where all of your influence is. That's where it all happens. And so sometimes, yes, you're picking up on it. And so in this case, the answer to your question is both because they were picking up on the vibration of intention. And then they were adding to the vibration of intention by adding their own human satellite dish on planet earth thoughts to it and trans in an even stronger way so it caused that player those players to be more in the receptive mode yes 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 influence influence just remember that you want your influence to always be about what you're for and never to be about what you're against because as long as your influence is what you're for then you have the backing of the universal forces you see so you're not wanting to stamp out the poverty in your own life. You're wanting to increase the prosperity. You're not wanting to rid yourself of an illness. You're wanting to goose up your well beingness and so forth. Yeah. Not wanting to get over confusion. You're wanting to enhance clarity. You're not wanting to get over hating someone. You're wanting to love and so forth. Helpful? Yes. Something more? No, that was a great answer. Really good. Thank you. Thank you.